You know, a wizard is never late. He always arrives exactly when he intends to. Two o'clock. Somewhere. Bible study. Colossians. Three. Waiting for people to join. Let's wait. Let's have fun. You and me on a journey. A journey through time and space. No, a journey through Colossians. Paul's letter to the Colossians. So um, a uh, discussion, not, not, a, not, a, uh, not a monologue. We're going to continue uh, to um, uh, sort of uh, uh, work through this book which I hope you're going to love and make our way through. He's got nap time. Hey, buddy. You want this? Good afternoon. Let's see. We've got uh, Terry Lynn. We've got Cindy. Bop. Got Will, uh, Will Robinson, Danger Will Robinson family, uh, Maggie, Carol, Jean. Uh, hey, you're here. Missed. Steve Jacoby is here. Excellent. Ask your questions, make your comments. We will uh, work our way through. Uh, I will see your questions, a little delay, but nevertheless, I will still see them. Um, uh, uh, I'll still see them and I will still reply to them as best as I can with the ADHD that I have in the order that they have been received, okay? All right. Colossians chapter 3. Good, good, good. You know, we should have a little talk. I'd like you to, to talk to me about whether or not you like the full screen aspect of the picture in the picture. If you like 4x3, which is a little smaller, or you like... Um, it's... It's fit to be square, smaller me, or maybe you like, um, I'll get around to it eventually. See what I did there? And finally, um, I'm feeling, this This is my personal favorite. Hi, Ann. Good to see you. This is the uh, Jacoby thing. It's called tall. So I'm feeling tall. Um, just, you know, leave your votes, give them to, uh, the media folks and, uh, we can, um, yeah, I, I think everybody likes the, the, the main, the main picture so that they can see the superstar. What this? Let's roll. Um, first off, the thing that you need to avoid, the thing that you need to avoid is the thing which will take you from the faith of Jesus and put you, um, uh, put you somewhere else. All the different things which will deflect from Jesus being such a God as to save you. And these are the elemental principles of the world. These are the uh, the religion of men, the religion that we come up with, the religion that we um, uh, that the uh, that our old Adam constructs, which deflects Christ in some way, shape, or form, whether it be um, hyper religion. Works that you have to do. I like the full screen too. Thanks, uh, Colonel. Um, the, the religion that you do and don't do, don't um, the religion of men, don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. The Gnostic stuff, which 
which makes it all about knowledge. Instead, he is the thing that pulls everything together, knitted and joining ligaments together, growing the church into his body. The corpus mysticum, take, eat, this is my body, becomes the corpus verum, the true body, which is the church. In all of that, these things which deflect from him, the things which, which um, uh, uh, steal us, distract us, captivate us, or all the things of the world that need to, to um, they need to go away, we need to repent of them. Um, if with Christ you die to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive, are you dogmatized by them? And we see this today in the cancel culture. Um, the, the, the mystical body is his body. I'm sorry. Thanks, Finker. The mystical body is his body, which comes from the true body, which is his body and blood. So the mystical body is the church. The true body is, I think sometimes the ADHD has my wires crossed. Thank you, Finker. Um, I, you should cover me on, on Monday and Tuesday for that. But the, 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 the true body, the body and blood, bodies and bloods us together into the mystical body, the church. Thank you. I don't know why we do it, man. But the point here is, is all of these things are deflecting from that. So before we get to 3-1 and you begin to think initially of, hey, I got to get spiritual. Understand that it's, 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 it's transactional religion. It's, it's it's Gnostic religion. It's hyper um, hyper religiosity. It's holding your hands right, or the reverse, thinking that it has to be uh, Kowo, contemporary worship, which lands us in the place where we have to seek things I know above. And the culture today isn't going to help us. The culture isn't going to help us. Because um, the the cancel culture today is you screw up once and you are done. You are done. All right. You have one thing on Twitter 10 years ago. And unless you are of the right group, you're out. And so you have to submit to this. You have to um, do your proper penance. You have to grovel in order to crawl out of the hole that you made for yourself with a comment or a thought or a thing, which is, which may have been appropriate in the culture 25 years ago, but now is verbose. Uh, I'm sorry, verboten, forbidden. And so the, the, the evil of the council culture is, one, it's about power. Um, we determine what can be said and what can't be said, and we determine who's right and who's wrong. All right? It's about, um, yeah, you got to be an influencer. And you gotta be a you gotta be an influencer on their terms. And all of this deflects from Christ. So we have young people walking around thinking about thinking that um thinking that America is an awful country because it was founded on slavery, which that's just not true. That's just not true. Or a professor that said that America was the the inventor of, of slavery. Also not true. Not true. Tomorrow's video short on Onesimus and Philemon and Christianity's uh, view of slavery. Um, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but um, Onesimus was a slave. And then just Google it and see the pictures of him. And you'll see, um, you'll see This man who seems as white as, as me, who was a slave in the ancient world. And 
Athanasius, who was black, dark-skinned. So Christianity and slavery, these two things are antithetical. Christianity doesn't know anything about racism other than it's hate. And it doesn't belong. Jew or Gentile, slave or free man. But tell the tell a woke world that? Absolutely not. They'll not accept it. Because one bad thing cancels a lifetime of accomplishments. As I had a conversation with a family member concerning Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, that they did great things does not change that they owned human beings. Again, the culture deflects from Christ. And what's lost in this? Forgiveness. Because if we actually forgive somebody, then we have to... Then, then, then we can no longer hold power over them, no longer force them to do what we want to do. All this isn't just a political thing. I'm not getting political. What I'm trying to do is get you into 3-1, which isn't only about, um, hey, live, live like a Jew. Live like a Christian. It's believe Christianity. It's first table before it's second table. But so often, 3-1 is get rid of the flesh and, and seek the things which are higher and more spiritual. When that is against the very stuff that we've had in chapter 2. I think the answer, and I'm working on it in my coconut, and so it won't take a, a few days to, to ruminate. The answer to the cancel culture is forgiveness. We're going to forgive somebody's sins and we're going to stick to it. And we're not going to execute uh, power over them by um, by by never forgiving them and making them do penance. Maybe the answer to the cancel culture is I just simply forgive them. Because God in Christ has forgiven them. We can move on. And literally move on. 3-1. And so... If you have been raised together. Yeah, right. I figure we're going to, we're going to, we're going to cause, um, we're going to cause Erica some, uh, um, and so if we've been raised together with Christ or by Christ, it's a, it's a dative. Ze Taita. Um, seek imperative uppity things above things. Erica, we we should have named the company Uppity Things or or Above Things because I'm not really sure that Ano means higher. Um uh, it doesn't. It's it, it. doesn't appear to be a superlative, or, or a comparative. Um, it means uppity things. Seek the the above things. Ano is above. Okay. So lose that stuff that you think is important, not snootier things. Lose that. Um, uh, uh, lose that stuff and go with above things. Got to rename the company. Now, now, this is the verse by which, um, Pastor Marcus Hill named the first Higher Things Conference 20 years ago, Higher Things. Um, Higher Things was the name of his campus newsletter, um, that he did when he was pastor at the University of, of Wyoming. And you always have to give the father's the Founding Fathers, um, some props. And so, if you've been raised with Christ, seek above things. And above things are body and blood things, um, baptismal things, word things, absolution things. Ha ha ha, Kim, anti-law things. Well, anti-deflect from Christ things, okay? Because anti-law things will get me four-page single-space letters. 
Um, seek the things which are above. Higher things. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So where he is, that's where you sh- what the things that you should be seek- seeking. Seek the things that are above. It's a great translation. Above things. But if you want to understand it, th- seek gospel things, forgiveness things, freedom things, body and blood things, holy absolution things, mercy things. Christ things. Hi, Jason. Good to see you. And where you're going is Christ, where he, the head, gives you his body and blood, corpus verum, to make you the corpus mysticum, his body. Uh, Then again, ah no, again. Set your mind above and not on the earth. And the earth here is not that the earth is bad. The earth here is um, is that the elemental spirits are running the show here. Cancel culture is running the show here. No mercy is running the show here. Um, uh, uh, transactional religion is running the, the show here. Quid pro quo religion is running the show here. Um uh, fold your hands a proper way and God will love you and answer your prayers is running the show here. Do good works and God will bless you is running the show here. Um, oh, 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 get contemporary and it's more relevant and that will will cause God to bless you. Uh, that's Those are the things which are going on here. Things which detract from Christ, rob him of his glory and cheat you of a savior Who wants to save you? He did not go through Calvary and Easter to leave you in a transactional religion. God loves you, but you need to make him the Lord of your life. God loves you and sent his son for you, but you need to live right. Seek the Christ things. I mean, ano there means Christ. Ta'ano. It, it means Christ because that's where Christ is. So if you make this about chastity or um, uh, uh, not being racist or being loving or um, not being stealing or not being stealing, not being a thief or, or gossip or like, which are great things. Please be chaste. Please don't gossip. Please honor your parents. Please do those things. But that's not the primary reference to what's going on here in the context of what's going on above it. Go to where Christ is, his gifts. Corpus verum makes corpus mysticum. Godly things, Kim. Gospel things. Now, why did Kim say... um, seek anti-law things? Well, because um, the law is the religion that's running all those other things. So the movement is between the things which you work to, to earn salvation to the things which salvation is a gift. Are you saying the law is bad? No, I'm not saying the law is bad. The law is good when it drives us to Christ. The law is not good when it directs us back to ourselves. So law that kills is an above thing because it kills you in order to that Christ would make you alive. The other things are coming. He's about to make reference to it. Right. Bad in terms of saving you. We're having a family reunion here. The Ingalls are having a magic moment right in our channel. Hi, wife. Hi, husband. Moving on. Um, 
Hawk, um, uh, for you, um, for you die. And your life is a perfect passive, has been hidden with Christ in the God. Right, Cheryl, the law of God is good and wise. Calling us to repentance, saving us. Law for law's sake isn't necessarily Christian. But I love the law when used properly. That's what the scriptures say. You want some improper uses of the law? Well, that's a great question. Why not? Here are some improper uses of the law. Please take this money back. Um, it's blood money. The clergy say, Ah, Judas, you got to handle that yourself. How does that end? That's breaking a bruised reed. Proper use of the law? This one. Go and tell the disciples, disciples and Peter. Because there's a word of law there. Peter has separated himself from the, the, from the disciples by his denial. But there's a wonderful word of gospel there. Please make sure Peter hears this. Don't let Peter think that he's not included in this. Because he is. Not slamming the angles. I love the angles. I'm so happy that they're here. So the, so forgiveness, that's the higher thing. That's the above thing. Mercy, love, joy, peace. I mean, all of the things which flow from Christ. Where Christ is, there's the above things. Where you are, that's the lower thing. The things that you need to repent of. Am I, am I saying that, that immorality and all that isn't part of seeking higher things? Yes. When you get to the second table, after you've gotten to the first table. But don't go second table and then forget about the first table. I love you guys. I got in a little fruity in there. I, I did. Fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, I started, started there. It's, it's, the, it's the fruit. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that later. Pastor Finker. When Christ appears, who is y'all's life? Then you also will appear with him in glory. So here's the deal. I used this example in Bible class on Sunday. I thought it was a lot of fun. So, um, I'm going to use Colonel Davis, who's here as an example. Uh, Colonel Davis, who's a, who's a retired colonel in the Army, uh, or was a, re was a colonel in the Army. When he was promoted from lieutenant commander, I'm sorry, from lieutenant colonel to um, colonel, the, the moment that he heard that he was going to be a colonel, the reality of that colonelness was true of him, even though he hadn't been pinned on the full bird. The same is true of your Christian life. All of the all of the things about you that Jesus says about you are are true. You are without sin. You are holy. You are seated in the heavenly places with Christ. As he is, you will be also. All true. Now, the reality of that, the visual part of that, hasn't happened yet. Even though it is true by faith. And just like Lieutenant Colonel Davis, when he got the announcement that he would be um, promoted, for all intensive purposes, was a colonel. Full bird. But that had to be worked out. 
if this is a failed example, um, I'm sure Finker will, or, um, or Lestica will correct me. But what, what I'm saying is, it was true of him, and not true at the same time, not yet true, and yet true. All things are yours. When he appears, they will be yours, but now they're true by faith. Here, you died with Christ and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when you're, when he appears, who is your life, you will appear with him in glory because of some works that you've done? No, by faith. That's why I'm convinced some of our first um, words um, when we see the Lord, it'll be like, oh man, just the way I thought, just the way I believed. I think some of us will also think, you're uglier than I expected, Jesus. Because um, he's not an attractive guy, at least that's what Isaiah says. There's nothing about him that we would have found attractive. You're uglier than your pictures of blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus. Right in his nose. And look at him looking at me like, really? You hit me in my nose? Right, Will. And Erica. It's a paradox that is only temporarily true, but yet is that temporary is our whole life. It's true by faith, yet not true now, but yet true by faith. And you can't say only faith. Is it true? Because faith is, is receiving Jesus. But as we go back and forth here, isn't that what sanctification is? Isn't that what sanctification is? Sanctification is God working out his holiness in your life through confession and absolution. As he takes your face and he points it more and more away from you and more on him. For you have died in the waters of baptism, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. But yet you're alive still in the body, in the body of sin and death, which is why you die to yourself daily, take up your cross, and follow him. And Christianity would have the whole of, of our social structure turned upside down, where to be like him is to be servant, slave of others not master and boss. Look how good I've progressed in my sanctification. I'm better than all of you, with the exception of maybe Finker, cool beard. Put to death, that is again, baptismal language. Neck, ra'o, put to death. Pastor Finker, he's your life. No life without him. No new life. Just like it's a growth that comes from God from before. And so put to death the members that are in the world. Sexual immorality, uncleanness, Lustful passion, desire, cocaine, evil, and greediness, which is idolatry. What I want you to do first and foremost is see that the elemental nature, the transactional religion is the first thing that you need out of before anything else. It's the first thing you need to repent of. Where you have been, um, what was the word he used? 
was during Pastor Finker's day. Taken captive. So those things which took you captive, those things which, that's the first thing that you need to repent of when you're seeking the above things. And then while, after you've, after you've done that, you put to death the rest of you with its immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of this, because of this, dia plus the accusative, because of this, the orge to theu, the wrath of God is coming. Hmm. On the sons of disobedience. Right? We are to take every thought and make it captive. And why, Kim? To save ourselves? No. Because we have been saved. Because we've been removed from the dominion of the elemental spirits of this world that have kept us captive into um, earthly religion of quid pro quo and do this uh, and God will love you. Because we've been set free. We don't need to live in immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, covetousness, and idolatry. That's the way we used to be. That's not the way we are. But yet we are. But yet we aren't. But yet we are. Back to the simul, which dear Finker parted out, pointed out a couple of days ago. We are these things. We do these things, but yet we don't. See, because our life is hidden with Christ and God. This is why that strange thing in Romans where Paul says, I don't sin anymore. What? Sin in me sins. But Christ in me, he don't sin. My new Adam, he don't sin. Old Adam knows nothing but sin. That's this life. That's the life he's describing. Take that old Adam and drown it. Make it die. Kill it. And if we're being Lutherans, the whole thing's run by the gospel, which makes the third use a gospel use of the law. In the gospel, forgiven, free, I hold up the law and go, now this is a good word of God. This is some excellent stuff. You know what I need to do? I need to kill my old Adam with all its desires, all its sinfulness, with this good law. And that's the third use of the law. I need to teach, instruct, ad admonish, punish my old Adam with the law of God because I live in the gospel because I'm free because I'm saved and my old Adam's not going to know anything my old Adam knows religion hold your hands like this you gotta love Pastor Finker, put to death what Christ already drowned. Stop giving your old Adam CPR. Because we don't really want him to die. Not really. I mean, he's fun. He's fun to have around. He's the life of the party. Or the life of church. Oh, how pious they are. Oh, what a great witness I am. And all of that deflects from Christ. And all of that is low things. 
Not above things. Not body and blood things. Not baptismal things. Not word of God things. Not absolved things. St. Paul says, sanctification is Christ in action. What about our participation in it? We are his instrument. Tools in the hands of a master. I don't, I don't know if you know this. Holy smokes. I don't know if you know this, but... I don't have many skills. Don't know much about history. Um, I can't fix your car. I can't fix the electricity in my world. I can't fix my AC or my car. I said that already. Don't know much about science books. I don't know much about the French I took. So, a screwdriver in my hands. I may be able to fix my Mac. But let's say that you put that same screwdriver into the hands of a world-class carpenter. Or electrician. All of a sudden, that tool is top shelf. Screwdriver in the hand of a mechanic, your car could get fixed. Christ is in action. You are the tool that he is doing good to those around you with. Well, it's still us doing it. Okay. Is that really who you want to point to, though? Is that really, 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 really what you want to point to? Is that the emphasis that you want to make? How good the screwdriver is? Or how good the artist is who's using the screwdriver. The only reason why you would put the emphasis on you is if you want to be like God. Oh wait, that's the sin in the garden. That's the sin that we suffer from. So no one's denying that you're active in your uh, sanctification. You just want to point to Christ instead. He's the one that's active. The one that's preparing works in advance for you to do that you may walk in them. And the highest sanctification is dying to your sins so that you might be raised, forgiven for others to love them as God in Christ has loved you. What a wonderful world this would be, Kim. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, because Christ is your life. Put to death, therefore, because you have been saved. Put to, their, to, their, to, to death, therefore, the one who died... Uh, uh, the, the, the you that would fight to save yourself. So put to death your sexual immorality, your impurity, your passion, your evil desires, your covetousness, which is idolatry, which on account of this, the wrath of God is coming. So you're saying people could just sin? No. No. I'm not saying people can just sin. Nobody said that. Nobody said that. 
Why are you talking smack like that? In these you once walked. When you lived in them. So, so does the Christian get better? The Christian gets forgiven. More and more. More Jesus, more mercy, more love, less you. And yeah, you'll have some victory in your life. But it'll always be tempered with defeat as well. As you figure out one sin, get it some, uh, some semblance of control over it, only to find that something else that you didn't even realize was sin was actually sin. So, pointing to a victorious life as a Christian, why? Let's, let's not do comparisons. Let's not bring us back to the slavery of the law. Instead, let it be all more Jesus. You know what? I don't know if I'm better than I used to be, but I know I'm forgiven. I know that he that begun a good work in me will bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that I, I once did these things and I don't do them anymore, but you know what? I still was one that did these things. Um, and he has rescued me so much from my sins that I now look at them and go, oh, old friend, your gift so that I won't judge others. Who am I to judge you with the sins that I have? Did you just say sin was a gift? In Christ, keeps me humble. He defeats it. Yeah. That's right, Kim. Kim Quigley down under. The more I read the Bible and see that uh, what God says, the more I seem to be, uh, what I seem to be doing is sin. But now, Nuni Dad, there's that big but now. Throw the thing in reverse. That's the way you used to be. That's not the way you are now. And by the way, why Why can't this be a performative word? Happy ordination day, Lestico. How many years have you been out? How many years have, has Lestico been a pastor? What I want all I really want, what I really, really want is for you to consider the possibility that this also might be a performative word. That the word itself changes you. That the word itself makes you a different person. That he calls you different than you are. And then that calling makes that reality true in your life as you live in your baptism. So you are his, and so you no longer live in immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. You no longer live in anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk, and the like. 
19 years? You mean I've been a pastor longer than Lestico? Um, um, this is a performative word, too. I'll give you another example. I am the Lord your God that brought you out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. You'll have no other gods before me. You'll not misuse my name. You remember my Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And the like. There's no way I'm older than last go. Um, that was a performative word. You are my people. I'm your God. This is the way my people are. This is a performative word. You aren't these people anymore. Don't live that way. Now, the children of Israel made that a law word. By looking at him and going, all that the Lord says we will do. We make this a law word. By saying, oh yeah, we're going to get right on that. When in actuality, he is proclaiming you to be something different. And that word which is preached, read, sung, chanted into you. Changes you. And that, confessing and dying and living, is working out your fear, your salvation with fear and trembling. Which, Kim, the next sentence says, which is God working in you. First, a performative word, a changing word, a reality changing word. Think about it. You don't have to buy it. Just think about it for a bit. Ponder it. That God is such a God as to change you with a word like I forgive you all your sins. You once walked this way. You were living in them. But now, now you got to put away, you got to lay aside all of that stuff that's you. And that's the anger, the, the rage, Thumon. Um, I always call myself online, Reverend Father Thumos. That's where you can find me on PS4. Uh, Kakia. Uh, evil, wickedness, uh, blaspheming, slander, abusive language that comes out of your mouth. Um, uh, don't lie to one another. Um, stripping off the old man with his act. The way you used to be, you don't have to be any longer. And if this sounds like the symbol to you, it's because it is the symbol. You are saint and sinner at the same time. 100% saint and 100% sinner. So that doctrine gives you permission to just live in your sins. Stop it, liar. It's not what anyone has said. And so this guy is constantly being buried by this guy. So that the whole of you can live for others. Coram Deo before God. 
Well, my problem with the symbols is that the person could just live in their sins. Stop it. That's what you want to do. You want to live in your sins. But what if that's not who you are? What if your life, too, has been hidden with Christ in God? And when Christ, who is your life, appears, you'll be like him. This chapter gets a load of Lutherans in trouble by folks who love to talk about how much they love to talk about their love for the law. They love to tell the story about how much they love the law. Christ has saved you from that so that you can love the law killing that old Adam and not resuscitating him and taking him ashore and doing mouth to mouth on him so that the whole of you now can live before Christ seeking above things. we we'll talk about more of this tomorrow. Today, it's enough to remind you store.higherthings.org Live Bible Study is the code. Live Bible study is the code, which gives you huge, huge discounts in the Higher Things store of all of that wonderful Higher Things merchandise, Colossians 3.1, at bargain basement prices. Nagel walked in one time and said, Oh, Kittle's on sale at CBD. Sell your water and go buy Kittle. Um, here, sell your PlayStation and go buy some higher things stuff. Well, maybe not. But nevertheless, check it out. Check it out. Same bad time. Same bad title. See you later, Jason. Evening prayer tonight. Um, have a blessed day. And I will see you tomorrow.